So hello to you all and welcome to my channel. This is your first time watching. Welcome and this is your time coming back. Welcome back. Yeah. I'm, I'm like that. Today's video is going to be a video all about the Jaclyn Hill X Morphe collaboration. The palette that everyone has been talking about pretty much on social media for days now. And this is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette that she has made with Morphe. Because it says Morphe on it. I don't know what's wrong with me today, but basically this video is going to be swatches, first impressions review, tutorial on this face that I created using this palette. I will include timestamps in this video, by the way. You can see the review, you can see the swatches, you can see the tutorial, but you don't have to watch the whole video if you don't want to. So getting into the review of this video, uh, this is what the palette looks like. Again, this is a pretty uh, sleek packaging. It's very much Jaclyn because she really likes the white, uh, the silver, and I feel like this is authentically her palette just by looking at it because this is these are the colors that she likes herself. Morphe itself, they are not known for their super expensive packaging. I have had palettes from them that have sort of fallen apart um, and that is because the packaging is not really the best. And the packaging on this palette is slightly better and I do expect it to be better than the original packaging because they are asking for almost they are asking for about ten dollars more for this palette than they usually ask for their normal palettes because usually their palettes are priced at about twenty two dollars twenty three dollars this one is priced at about thirty eight dollars which is a lot more so i naturally expect that the packaging is better which it is i do have to say that this feels pretty much like white cardboard i mean it looks great it looks amazing but i feel like when i look at like when i like feel this i feel like it's white cardboard and i actually think that this will get dirty very quickly because number one the color and also the fact that it is cardboard and that actually means that if you get eyeshadow if you get lipstick if you get foundation on it you're gonna have a hard time getting it out and i've already used this once and i've already gotten some smudges on it like right here and some in the back as well not necessarily that visible and it's not a really that big of a deal but that's just me being very critical about this palette i'm not going to sugarcoat any review or just say something is amazing when i don't necessarily think it's amazing or forego any kind of criticism because i like someone who made the palette or made the product i'm always going to be super critical and give my honest opinion that's just what i do on my channel and i'm not sure if that's really obvious if you're watching my videos but i always try to be as honest as i can which is what i'm trying to do with reviewing this palette because as much as i love her i do have something to say about this palette so yeah when you open this this is pretty much what it looks like this is basically a selection of all these different colors. There are a lot of warm toned neutral colors, which is what Jaclyn Hill really likes to do. If you go on her channel, you'll see that she loves to play with really warm tones, especially when she creates her really warm toned smoky eyes. And you see a lot of warm tones like here and especially here, but I do like how she included pops of color, especially in this corner right here, because I feel like that adds a little bit of variety into this palette. And if you're someone who's just starting out with makeup, or you are someone who wants a very well-rounded palette that will suit your every need, um, this is something that you might want to look into because you have a lot of variation within these shades. This is not like any of Morphe's usual palettes because those palettes are usually themed to have like a certain color scheme. Like the Morphe 350, that palette was very warm toned. Um, the Morphe 35F, I believe that had a lot of pinks and cool tone bronzy colors in it if I remember correctly but my point is usually Morphe decides to do a lot of theme palettes whereas the theme for this palette is pretty much Jaclyn wants to create colors and uh, finishes and textures that she wants so you're left with a palette that pretty much embodies what she wants in a palette meaning that you have a lot of variation in this palette you have a lot of color which is something that I really do find myself enjoying. However, as much as I love this palette, I do have to mention, just for the sake of consumerism, you do not have to absolutely positively get this palette. If you look at this palette and you see, hey, most of these colors I already have, or I already have very similar colors in my collection to these colors, 
then I would suggest not getting it unless you are super, 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 super huge fan of Jaclyn Hills. Then maybe you want, might want to get it just for a collector's item. But when I was looking at this palette personally, I was thinking that I wanted to get it because Jaclyn Hale has worked on it so hard. She has worked on this for two years. So I was really expecting something that was going to be really high quality and I was really expecting to enjoy this palette, which I am. But the other reason I bought this palette was simply because I think that a lot of the colors in here were colors that I didn't currently have in my collection, which is why I decided to get them in this palette. You do not need to get this palette unless you absolutely want to. Um, and I think that's okay because guess what? Makeup is makeup. There are a lot of similar colors out there. And I think that's fine, you know, because you don't need to go out and get every single palette or every single makeup product or every single makeup launch you see because there's nothing wrong with being a little bit picky, a little bit choosy because it is your own hard-earned hard money that's going into purchasing any kind of makeup product. That is like kind of like my little disclaimer. And now actually going into the shades and the colors that I've swatched so far. Overall, I think that the formula of pretty much all of these colors is really, really great. It's not like the most amazing out of this world thing that I've never, ever, ever seen ever before. You know, it's not like something that groundbreaking. But I do have to admit the, that I feel that the quality of this palette is slightly better, if not completely better than most other Morphe palettes that I've tried. Keep in mind that I haven't really tried a lot of the recent ones, I'm not a Morphe fanatic, but so far what I've tried with the uh, palettes that I have tried with Morphe, I do see that there is a difference between this palette and the usual Morphe palettes in the sense that I feel like this palette is a lot more well-rounded and I prefer the formula in this palette than the other Morphe palettes, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to go into swatches right now to give you a more cohesive idea of the different colors in this palette and how they swatch, how they, how pigmented they are. So I do hope that the next segment will give you a more clear view of what these colors actually look like when you swatch them. Okay, so I'm swatching these colors in natural light, by the way, with no exposure, no kind of color correction or anything like that, because I wanted to show you the actual colors. So the first row that we have here, I'm going to start off with um, in light. This is described as a color that has a satin finish. Personally, I disagree because I feel like it has more of a shimmery finish, but overall this is a pretty good color for like a subtle brow bone highlight or like a highlight in general if you want that kind of thing. It's just personally, I don't want to really use this to set my eyeshadow because I feel like it's too shimmery for that. But other than that, it's a good color. I kind of just wish they had like a matte, creamy color, like a cream colored color so I could set my eyeshadow, but that's okay. But next I have uh, Beam, which is essentially a more intense version of In Light. It is also lighter than In Light, um, a few shades lighter actually, you can see pretty clearly here, and it is more of a frosty color as well. And next up I have the two transition colors which are called Silk Cream and MFEO. The only difference between these two colors, this one, this first one is by the way is Silk Cream, the second one is going to be MFEO. The only difference is that the undertones are a little bit different, but um, I think that's okay, a lot of people will complain about that. I think that whenever I'm doing eyeshadow, I try to look at the undertones of the eyeshadows I'm going to be using before I choose a transition color. That's just a habit of mine, and I appreciate that this is what they included in the palette. But of course, everyone's going to have their own opinion. That's just mine. Then I have Faint, which is a super frosty, super metallic, light pink color. This is beautiful on the eyes. I love it so much. You can see that it swatches really well, especially with the finger. And I would actually use this with your fingers uh, because then you get the most intensity. Or you can use it with a wet brush and you'll get even more intensity. This is just one of those colors I really do love. And then right after that, I have a color that I wasn't expecting to like, but I actually ended up really loving. This one is called Sissy. It's a pink with a gold reflex, and I think that it's a beautiful color, and I would really love to wear it sometime. I haven't worn it just yet, but I've swatched it several times, I have to admit. And right next to it, I have um, a coral version of that same metallic. This is called Little Lady. It's a corally version, like I said, and it's pretty much the same in terms of pigmentation. Both of these colors are pretty pigmented. They look like they're going to be pretty blendable, which is also a good thing. And I've actually, I think I've used the Little Lady and I had no problems with that either. So this is the first row. You can see that these are all the colors right here. 
We're moving on to the second row now. The first color that I'm swashing is called uh, Creamsicle. This, I think, if you have super uh, dark skin or if you have like, a medium skin tone, this would be great as a transition color because of just how pigmented it is and just how dark it is. So if you're concerned about finding a transition color in this palette, I would think that this would be amazing. Um, the next color that I have is Butter, and then right after that I have Pooter. So these are very beautiful. These are uh, some of the blendable colors in this palette when it comes to mattes. And then right after that I have Pukey, which is what she named this very pukey brown eyeshadow. Um, I like the name and I like the eyeshadow. So yeah, pukey especially, super blendable. I was really pleased with that. Then after that I have Hunts, which is more of a red tone. I do have to go over it several times for it to actually show up and actually swatch in a good way. But this is common for like really ready tone eyeshadow so that's not really unusual but still I feel like I have to tell you about that. Then I have Firework which is like a foiled orange color. Beautiful. I would not expect Jacqueline Hill to come out with a palette that I did not include this color. And then last but not least I have Queen which is like an antique gold color which is also very beautiful. It's also a foil. Blends beautifully. Buttery, creamy, soft. Perfection. Okay, next row, I have Obsessed. This is a beautiful color. I love all these colors, they're so beautiful. <laughs> so this one is one that's super frosty, super highlightery. I love this color so much, it's one of my favorites. I am obsessed with it, no pun intended. Then right after that I have SBN, which also stands for Smoky But Natural. Um, I might like this color too. I love these colors. Of This color itself, it's so beautiful, it's the perfect shimmery, foily brown color that looks good on pretty much every skin tone. Then right after that I have Hillster, which is like this cranberry brownie color. Also like a foily texture, very beautiful, blends out beautifully. Then I have Roxanne. This is one of those patchy matte colors that I found in this palette. For me personally, I just felt like this was patchy since you do see that in the swatch. It deposited a lot at the top, but then it kind of like fizzled out at the bottom. Uh, when you have a blendable color, you know it's blendable if you have a gradient. This one is a little bit more blendable, I can see. This one is called the Jax, and it's it's more blendable because you have the more gradient thing going on, and it actually pre performed pretty well in the eye as well. Then I have Buns. This is, again, a beautiful rosy-toned brown color. Jacqueline Hill loves her warm browns, as do I, of course. And then last but not least, I have Cran Apple, which is a beautiful shimmery um, cranberry color, of course. Of course, I love these colors a lot, and that is pretty much that row. That's the third row, and the AC just turned off. Fantastic. Now I actually get a good sound. Okie doke, so next up we have this row, and let's start off with a boom boom boom, bang bang bang, with this color called Royalty, which I love so much. I was actually wearing this in my on my eye in the video, you can see that I love it. Then after that I have uh, Twerk, this is a beautiful blue color, it has more of a shimmery finish than a, like a foiled finish. Uh, pretty decent, I guess, but I don't like it as much as I do love Royalty, to be honest, if I'm being very honest. I have Hustle, which is like this silvery, beautiful color. Again love these foils. Then I have Meeks. I love it so much. I love all these colors. This is like this beautiful bronzy uh, brown color. It's so beautiful. It's foiled by the way if you can't see how beautiful it is. Next I have 24-7. This has a glitter finish which I really like especially since this is not a spray over it. It actually is glittery throughout. I actually tested it out. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a spray over. It wasn't. Then I have Chip which is a matte color again is a matte brown but it has like a little bit of a purpley undertone and then the last color in the row is called mocha this is your pretty uh standard chocolatey brown color that pretty much everyone should have in their life okay last row we are on the finish line in the finish line on the way to the finish line this first color is called pool party jacqueline hill actually i think likes to wear this in her waterline on her lower lash line which i think is kind of a good idea. Then after that I have Jada, which is a turquoise, and this is a tone that a lot of brands seem to have trouble with because of the pigmentation, because of the pigments that have to go in this color to make this turquoise color. But Morphe did a pretty decent job, I mean it could have been better, but considering uh, the color, I think this was a pretty decent matte. Then after that I have Diva. This is this like sea foamy, greeny, foiled beautifulness that I always love. You can tell that I love these foiled eyeshadows. They're beautiful. 
Then after that, I have Enchanted. This is a matte green color. Not my favorite, um, not gonna lie, but it is a pretty decent uh, color anyway. I do like it a lot. You do have to work with it a little bit to get like the smooth the smoothness going. It's a little bit patchy on the swatches. Then after that, I have Central Park. Uh, Jacqueline Hill loves Friends, and she wanted to name the Central Perk, but she didn't want to get into trouble, so she named it Central Park instead. But I feel like I understand what she means. So this is uh, what it looks like. That's your know, pretty, again, standard, uh, slightly cool tone brown color. Reminds me of coffee, not gonna lie. Then I have Soda Bop, which is probably one of the best uh, matte colors in this entire palette. Pretty much it's so intense uh, it has like this purpley color to it beautiful matte they did a great job on that and then lastly you have abyss which is a black color in this palette morphe doesn't usually include blacks in their palettes but i do appreciate that they included one in this one not the best black i have to say i have to be honest it's not the best but it work layers pretty well it's workable and i feel like i really like the way that they included a black color in this palette because that means i don't really have to work with any other palettes i can just use this palette and i feel like it's complete if that makes any sense so those are the swatches, those are pretty much how the colors look on my skin. And I also want to mention that if you're interested in this palette and if you haven't seen Jaclyn Hill's um, video where she introduced this palette, you might want to check that out because that is a very interesting video that where she completely just details the entire story of this palette from how she started it to how she created every color. It's a very easy and very interesting uh, video to watch if you are interested in that. So the next and last segment of this video will be how to create this look right here using the palette. I was really happy with how this look turned out so if you want to see how I created this look and if you want to see a lot of these colors in action then keep watching. Don't ask why, but I just put on foundation on my face when usually I wouldn't really do that. So that's why I want to use this just to bake under my eyes. So I'm starting off with the Cody Airspun Powder. Just to make sure that any fall that I have will not affect the overall finished makeup look. I really don't know why I put foundation on before my eyeshadow because usually I wouldn't do that. But I did that. I'm weird. I'm just going to take a little bit of like some light powder and just apply this to my eyelid. So now I'm using the palette and I'm going to be using Beam, which is one of the highlight colors in this palette. And I'm using this in my uh, brow bone area. And my first impressions on this when I uh, basically put this on my eye was that it was pretty intense. So I think I might have put a little bit too much. But I was able to blend it out a little bit so it didn't look as frosty. But in general, this is a pretty pigmented shade and I do really like it. And next, I needed a transition color, so I went in with Silk Cream. I think it would be perfect if you have a light to medium skin tone for a transition. It's a really great pigment color. Moving on, I'm using this color, which is called Pukey. Now, if you don't know Jaclyn Hale, you probably think that this is a disgusting name and what's the point of naming an eyeshadow this name but if you do know Jaclyn Hill like I do and like so many other people do then you know that she loves this uh, specific yellowy brown color and she kind of jokes that it uh, looks like baby puke and a lot of her subscribers me included really wanted her to name a color like pukey or something along the lines of that if she ever came out with like that kind of very specific uh, shade of eyeshadow. So that's just a really specific thing to her. Next, I'm using Hunts. Uh, this is a beautiful red shade. This is one of my more favorite uh, matte colors in this palette because it is super pigmented. I'm just applying it slightly lower than uh, where I applied Pukey, but still just blending it into the other colors. And then I just used a clean brush just to sweep this all out and blend it all in. These eyeshadows are really quite blendable, which I do love. Okay, so then I mixed a little bit of Roxanne with Hunts, and I applied this to my crease as well, just because I wanted a little bit of that deepness going on, like I wanted a little bit more depth, but I didn't want it to look too harsh, which is why I mixed two colors, and also this is a palette, so I just feel like I'm tempted to do that, it's just a habit of mine, so yeah, I'm just using a fluffy brush to just, to just fluff it up, and yes, yeah, so I will be linking, well not linking, I'll be mentioning all the brushes that I'm using down below in the description if you're interested. But yeah, because I don't really know them off the top of my head that much, unfortunately. I wish I did. And then next I'm going in with this 
purple color. This is called Royalty. This is by far one of my favorite shades in this entire palette. I love it so much and I'm applying this with a pretty dense brush and I'm applying this to my outer corner and did I apply it to my inner corner? I can't remember. But I definitely, yeah, I'm applying this to my outer corner and this is such a beautiful rich color. It's just amazing. And then I'm also applying twerk and I'm using this in the center of my eyelid. Now, I was a little bit disappointed initially because I expected twerk to be a little bit more of a brilliant blue, but then I figured out like when I put it on with my fingers, it was a lot better. It didn't look as um, uniform, I guess, because it kind of blended in, kind of meshed into the purple a little bit too much. But once I used my fingers, it was just fine. It just added a hint of that blue, and I'm just applying this color now, I'm mainly concentrating on the center part of my eyelid, but I'm also just pushing the color into my inner corner as well. Okay, so now it was time to do a little bit of a clean up and I took a smudger brush and initially I was just using it clean but then I dipped it into a little bit of royalty just to make sure that this eye was really rounded and had some structure to it because I didn't want this to look messy and I felt like it was looking a little bit messy which is why I decided just to run across my crease with a little bit of a smudge brush. That way it doesn't look as messy and uh, the overall effect is a lot more pleasing to me. Then on my under eye area I'm using the same color royalty on the same brush. I'm just bringing the color down um, almost to the other end of my eye actually but I did leave it blank because I was expecting to use a highlight shade there but uh, the point is in this clip I'm just going to apply this uh, purple color into my bottom lash line. Again, this purple color, I wasn't expecting this color to be one of my favorite colors in this entire palette just because I don't really wear purple that much, but I really do love it. I, I'm obsessed with this purple, like specifically, which is why I used it in this tutorial. Now I'm going in with Obsessed, and if you watched Jacqueline Hale's video that she did on this palette, she apparently went through 20 samples of this color just to get it right, and I love it, so I think that she did a good job. I'm applying this in my inner corner, and you can see that it is very bright, it's very beaming, and I also applied it a little bit to my lower lash line as well, just because I want my eyes to look brighter and a great way to do that is just to apply a little bit of highlight into your inner corner and just bring it down into uh, your lower lash line just a teeny bit like I'm doing right here and you can see that's really just opening my eyes up making them look more wide awake and generally I think it looks a lot better so that's why I really like this technique. Okay so now I'm going in with some gel eyeliner. This is from Maybelline, my usual. I'm applying this into my inner waterline um, on the my top and bottom lashes just to make sure that I have a little bit of like definition, intensity, pizzazz going on pretty much. Now I'm going in with mascara. This is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara. I had a little bit of a brain fart there but this is an amazing mascara. Love it so much, it's really good. For false lashes, I'm using this really fluffy style from House of Lashes. I don't know what they are specifically, but I will link them down below so you can find them. Wow, that looks... That looks pretty good. I am pretty impressed by how this turned out. I really wasn't expecting this to be that dramatic, but like, you know what's new. Like, that's pretty much what I say every time I do a makeup tutorial. I don't expect it to be this dramatic, but let's just pile on the makeup. So I'm going to do the rest of my face really quickly, and then I'm going to come back. Um, everything that I'll be using, it will be linked down in the description box, so if you want to see what I'm using, you can check down there. But since this is just about the palette, I just want to keep this video focused on that, uh, so yeah, I'm just going to skip forward in time with a full face makeup. So that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching until the end. I um, hope you enjoyed it and got like an idea of whether or not you should purchase this palette. Again, I really love this palette. I think it's an amazing palette. There are some cons which I did list in this video, but for the most part, I'm really happy with how this palette turned out. Very much looking forward to playing around with it and just creating more looks with it and yeah pretty much that's all I have to say so again thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video bye guys that was a long video to be honest that was a very long video